What if the sun runs out in 2025? We love to cover cosmic questions on this channel, and a lot of them have to do with the center of our solar system. Obviously, if the sun ran out, there would be some major consequences back here on Earth. But if we knew about this problem four years in advance, would we be able to do anything to avoid these consequences? First, we need to determine what the sun running out would actually mean. On a normal timeline, the sun won't run out of the hydrogen fuel in its core for another five 5.5 billion years, at which point it will have expanded outward enough to literally engulf the entire Earth in plasma and fire, becoming a full-on red giant in the process. If the sun were to abruptly run out of the power without discharging any additional heat or expanding, simply flickering out of the sky, we'd have a much different situation on our hands. Let's say the sun is scheduled to disappear at 8 a.m. on a specific day in 2025. We actually wouldn't notice that anything has changed at all until 8.08 a.m. This is because it takes light around 8 minutes to travel from the sun to being seen on Earth. So the sun would still appear to be in our sky until it's 8 minutes of past sunlight finished reaching our world. At this point, our skies would go almost completely dark, with only starlight and a bit of ambient sunlight still trapped in the atmosphere providing a little bit of a glow. The moon would be completely invisible, as the sun's light is no longer reflecting off of it, and the moon doesn't naturally glow or provide any light of its own accord. Depending on where you're located, whether urban or rural, you might still have some man-made lights, but otherwise, the sky has gone dark and day has become permanent night. Unfortunately, this wouldn't be the only effect we'd feel at 8.08 a.m. Did you know that gravity travels at the same speed as light? Einstein's theory of relativity states that nothing can exceed the speed of light, and research Researchers measuring radio waves off the reflection of Jupiter and its moons were able to determine that gravity actually moves or travels at exactly the same rate. This would mean that at the same moment that our morning skies went dark, our planet and eventually every other orbiting body in our solar system, from Mercury to Pluto and beyond, would be flung in a straight line through space. We'd still be traveling at the same speed that we were already orbiting around the Sun with, at roughly 30 kilometers per second, but without any huge gravitational body to keep us in place, the Earth would likely continue flying through space endlessly, as the chances of actually running into another celestial object in the vastness of the cosmos are incredibly unlikely. There's just so much emptiness out there that the odds would be astronomically low. Without any sunlight in the sky, photosynthesis on Earth would completely halt, and most of the planet's plant life would die very early on due to the complete lack of food. There are some types of plant life, such as larger pine trees, that actually can survive for up to decades without needing to photosynthesize new energy, but the vast majority of vegetation, aka the very basis of planet Earth's food chain, would be dead within weeks. This means that most of the world's animal life would also be in rapid danger, with only scavenger-style predators being able to take advantage of the sudden rise in dead meat available. Any of the ecosystems still remaining would be entirely thrown out of whack. The lack of food wouldn't be the only issue impacting survivability. Without the sun, the Earth would begin to cool fast. Not instantly, as the planet's atmosphere does manage to retain and capture some heat thanks to greenhouse gases, both natural and man-made, but within two months, the Earth would have its temperature drop from 300 degrees Kelvin, or 26.85 degrees Celsius, to only 150 degrees Kelvin, or negative 123 degrees Celsius. That's far far, far below freezing temperatures, leaving the only beings capable of surviving on our planet to be microorganisms near the Earth's core, where there might still be enough heat to keep certain bacteria alive. Even the surfaces of Earth's oceans would have frozen by this point, leaving the bottom of the ocean insulated but still lifeless except for the very bottom of the ocean floor, another potential spot for microorganisms to survive. Within a thousand years, even the deepest ocean trench would have frozen solid, and by this point, Point, our atmosphere itself would have collapsed, leaving anything left or visiting on our frozen world to be bombarded with lethal amounts of cosmic radiation. All in all, without our sun, Earth's destined to be in a real bad spot. The one upside to this scenario is that if the sun was set to run out in the year 2025, and we had the heads up and knew this was going to happen, there are some wild and out there ideas we could try to save, or at least extend, the existence of humanity. Given that the 
the oceans will be insulated once their surfaces freeze, a deep bottom of the sea home base for humanity might be our best option. It would require tremendous coordination, manpower, and technology on a scale that mankind has never seen before, with multiple nations working together. The largest undersea bases at the moment are in far shallower waters and only capable of supporting around half a dozen people. Obviously, if you want to save the planet and potentially repopulate the species, you're going to need a few more people. Even a current seabed project being funded by famous aquanaut Fabian Cousteau only planned to have living quarters for 12 people at a time. It would take the pressure of our sun being in imminent danger to convince the people of the world that a huge underwater settlement was needed. One able to draw heat and energy from the Earth's core and with enough food stored to last a very long time. How long would we need exactly? Well, we've already established that without a star to orbit, the Earth is doomed to be completely frozen and poisoned by radiation within a thousand years. The incredibly sci-fi solution to this would have to be finding another star for Earth to orbit. The closest one to our solar system lies in Alpha Centauri, around 4.3 light years away. This means that even if we were able to have Earth be slingshot in the right direction at the exact moment the sun disappeared, it would take 42,000 years to reach the next closest solar system if we kept our speed of 30 kilometers a second. We would need wandering Earth-style engines implanted into the world's mountains, an even bigger feat of engineering and construction than even the ocean base would be, just to increase our speed enough to give us the smallest chance of reaching another star's orbit. Even if we achieved a tenth of the speed of light, it would still take us half a century. It would be a feat with literally billions of complications to figure out, essentially impossible to do within the four years this scenario gives us to figure out how to save the Earth. But the fun part of this channel is asking these big questions, finding the slightest possible way to survive these giant looming possibilities, and having hope that if we ever did find ourselves in a situation where the sun will go out in 2025, we'd be able to get our crap together and tackle the problem head on. If you enjoyed this video, why not hit the like and subscribe buttons and let us know how you would spend the next four years if you learned the sun was going to go out. I've been Josh Busker, and this has been Life's Biggest Questions.